the brilliant, the wonderful, the magnificent Connor Bailey! Just come shout out loud. I was a two time, yeah, two time school council representative. <laughs> oh, yeah, you know, first time I won, someone was like, Oh, you only won because of a popularity contest. I was wondering, Whoa, I'm popular! <laughs> um, but in reality, it was a very hard fought campaign because I had five year plans, I had a manifesto, I had a secretary who I paid in biscuits. Um, my opponent was, um, was no one else around. Because uh, they were scared of me, obviously. But, um, you know, um, it's weird because school council, uh, believe it or not, was not, I, it wasn't as I imagined. Surprisingly, because um, you know, I thought I'd be the never most popular guy in school. I thought you'd have swagger. Just mind you, this was when the This is where Jamie Reno came out. So you know, it's kind of like the swagger. You know, beautiful girls would come up to me and say, "Oh, Connor." <laughs> <laughs> That's my best voice. Uh, oh, Connor, we need another netball poster. Bitch, please. Hi. By the way, you can net my boy anytime you want. <laughs> I'm so sorry, that was the worst section when you went down. I'm probably as a dog. 
Uh, just on an unrelated note, making up sexual innuendo is one of the best pastimes anyone can do. And uh, people say that, you know, they're weird or hobbies. You know, there are weird or hobbies. Uh, Ross, they're being in department stores. Just FYI, Debenham's very strict on it, Mark Spencer's less so. Um, just one prime example of me, you know, doing my class actually really well, I think. Um, I take it off, we have to get fresh and drink, worst students, we have to get fresh and drink. Yeah, good, good. Um, obviously, it's to be expected, quite a lot of students as well. Uh, uh, well, let's just say canoodling with each other. That would be good. Two canoodling. And, uh, you know, I was speaking to myself when I first came to university. You know what? I would like to canoodle. And then here and there, you know, spread the seeds. Etc., etc. But, unfortunately, it didn't turn out that way. I just played the PlayStation more than that. No specifically Skyrim. So, you know, I would, you know, I was slaying dragons literally. You know, I bet now those guys had a long sword of fire. I don't know if any guys had had a long sword of fire, they probably didn't get that checked out. Um, but yeah, back to the tale of my pathetic life. Um, I don't have sympathy, it's true. Um, college came round, because uh, I went straight from secondary school to college, and puberty. Oh, oh. I swear to God I have. Um, <laughs> <laughs> came round, and um, fair to say, I could be hornier than a Viking tell. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's a lovely image for you there. Uh, two major things happened to me, well, I say, well, a couple of major things. Uh, most notable, first one was my appreciation of facial hair. Um, I always wanted to have, like, a massive, great big beard, not to overcompensate. <laughs> Although you do wonder, why did Dumbledore have such a long beard? <laughs> you, you just wonder, you know, don't you? So, um, you know, I always wanted to have a beard, but fact is, uh, my facial hair is not the same as my actual hair. My facial hair is blonde, and this is brunette, and, um, you know, it's like, it's weird when I say it, but the only comparison I can do is, like, again, imagine if I was there, you know you want to. Uh, you know, just kind of like me with, like, long long, flowing hair, you know, <laughs> shimmering in the moonlight, and all that. And then, just, then just having a massive ginger bush. <laughs> so, uh, you know, just kind of like a lovely, Marilyn Monroe, you know, just, just cracking the in the moonlight, and then like a weird Ed Sheeran and Robinson combination, <laughs> just casually hanging about all that. The second thing that happened to me mainly during puberty was uh, my views on romance. Um, now, I'm assuming most of you guys know about the bases of romance, is that fair to say? Yeah, bases? Yeah. Um, yeah, this is to remind myself more than anyone else. So, uh, first base is k kissing. Obviously, you know, how romantic exchanging some other consoles. Um, second base, you know, things get a bit more hands on. <laughs> Uh, oh, Jesus. Uh, things get suckled upon. Uh, <laughs> that's, uh, that's the only way I can really describe it. Uh, and fourth base. Fourth base is just... <laughs> I just want to say sorry to my friend for that gruesome image. And just for the record, when something does happen, it doesn't go like that. It's not a garden spread. There's no spread on the Although, if I could get that spread in trajectory, I wouldn't be up here. You know, I'd be on like, some video somewhere. Um, <laughs> But um, yeah, back to my, my bases. Um, I think it's what I started to do was develop bases way, way, way before romance. I, you know, like literally, if I said all of it, we'd be here forever. So basically, what I'm going to do is just say the first three, probably the most important ones. So here we go, Polybelli's Guide to Pick Up Chicks, as, uh, <laughs> as they say. Um, first, first base. The girl has to acknowledge your existence. <laughs> now, call me out an old fashioned romantic, but I believe this is probably the most important out of all the bases. You know, just whether it be, you know, simple eye contact or whatnot, or just generally them saying, you alright? <laughs> you know, just that. Just that. that that's probably, that's first base. That's first base. Second base is that they have to start a conversation with you. Now, what time is it? Can I borrow your pen? And please, for the love of God, put your trousers on. <laughs> Do not! I repeat, 
they do not count as conversation starters. <laughs> I've been asked two out of the three now, I'll let you decide which ones. Um, and the third, third base is that the girl has to smile slash laugh at you. <laughs> now, I think it's fair to say I have been in third base with quite a lot of girls in my time, <laughs> along with guys. <laughs> Out, I'm a little bit of a mad slump. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> um, I'm almost uh, out of material now, so what I'm probably going to do is leave you with... Uh, I've been thinking about philosophy as a great philosophy and, and life as you do in university. And uh, I just thought I'd just share a little bit of wisdom. So, uh, you know, take it as you will. So, here we go. Making life choices and falling home into the bit like it's a lot like choosing category or pornography. <laughs> and yeah, people are going to be disappointed by your decision. They're going to be angry, and you know, they might be a little bit disgusted. <laughs> and you know, you're going to sit in your room, naked. <laughs> and you're going to think to yourself, Am I really making the right choice here? <laughs> but you've just got to remember, no one else is going to clean up your consequences. You have to. <laughs> and the last thing, when it's all said and done, all you can do is hope. Well, I can't <laughs> I think, Colin Bailey, you've been awesome. Thank you so much.